boys and girls. Today we're talking about borrowing with uncommon denominators. We know how to borrow from our whole numbers when we have fractions, and we know how to borrow when we have a whole number of one or when we have a different whole number, but we've never borrowed when we have uncommon denominators. This isn't anything you don't already know because we know how to find common denominators and we know how to borrow, so we're just putting those steps together. To help you out with this, I'm going to use a couple of different colors to show you each step so that you can simplify it in your minds. The first step we need to do, which I have listed here, is before borrowing, the minuend and the subtrahend fractions need to have common denominators. Minuend and subtrahend. So what I'm going to do is write an equal sign right here. And we're going to create um, common denominators so we have a subtraction problem that we can work with. And I can already tell that my least common denominator between 4 and 2 is going to be 4 because 4 can go into 4, this fraction will stay the same, and 2 can go into 4 2 times. So since 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2. Now I have a fraction that I can subtract, however, I have a 1 here and a 2 here. So I have to do some borrowing. So our next step is, and actually I should have written that whole number over here too. So I'm going to write my 5 and my 3, carry those whole numbers over so that we can easily see it there. Um, and now I can go ahead and borrow. So you remember, when you borrow from your whole number, you cross this out, you're taking one unit away, and then since we're working with fourths, That'll give us 4 and 4 fourths. So now I'm going to write my equal sign here. And I have 4 and I have 4 fourths plus 1 fourth to make this a complete fraction here since I borrowed that 1. So 4 fourths plus 1 fourth equals 5 fourths. And then I'm going to bring over my 3 and 2 fourths. and I can now go ahead and subtract. I have 5 fourths minus 2 fourths, and that equals 3 fourths. And I have 4 minus 3, and that equals 1. I'm going to go ahead and circle my answer because I did a lot of work here, and I want to make sure that it's clear that's my answer. So you can see that we started with a problem here. We found our common denominators. And so we changed our fractions over here. Well, we kept 5 and 1 fourth the same. We changed this one from 3 and 1 half to 3 and 2 fourths. So this was the step where we found common denominators. And then we did our borrowing. So we subtracted from that whole number, took 1 away, and represented that whole number as a fraction. Added the fraction to the one that was already here. So we got 4 and 5 fourths and carried 3 and 2 fourths over because that doesn't change and then we were able to subtract. I'm going to show you another problem that's similar and I did the same thing, used different colors for each step. So in this problem I have 4 and 1 6 minus 2 and 2 thirds. I can't work, work with 6 and thirds so I had to make common denominators and my common denominator was 6 so I changed my 4 and 1 6 well I didn't change it, I carried it over here to 4 and 1 6 and 2 and 2 thirds I converted that into 2 and 4 sixths because 3 times 2 is 6 and 2 times 2 is 4. So then I had 4 and 1 sixth and 2 and 4 sixths. I couldn't subtract this 4 from the 1 so I had to borrow. I crossed out my 4, turned it into a 3, and I represented that one unit that I borrowed as 6 sixths because we're working with 6 here. Okay, and then I turned this into 3 and 7 6 because I had my whole number of 3. I added 6 6 to the 1 6 that was here. That equaled 7 6. So now I have 3 and 7 6 minus 2 and 4 6. And when I worked that out, I came up with 1 and 3 6. So then I actually had an extra step because I had to reduce. And so I wrote equals and I ended up with 1 and 1 half. And of course I circled my answer because it's a lot of steps and a lot of work. It would get very confusing to know what your answer is if you don't circle it in a problem like this. Okay, now for your practice. I want you to do 3 and 1 fourth minus 1 and 3 eighths. 
and 6 and 1 3rd minus 3 and 5 6 so you're gonna follow this model here make sure you have your equal sign carry your problem over with common denominators and then do your borrowing carry those numbers over here do your work if you end up with an answer that's already reduced circle it if not put your equal sign and reduce it I can tell you that both of these answers will need to be reduced. Have fun.